chapter 1. The book of 2 Corinthians, of course, is written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth. If you've read and studied 1 Corinthians, boy, he deals with a lot of problems in 1 Corinthians. Uh, but in 2 Corinthians, it's, it's a little different. And one of the things he's, he does in 2 Corinthians is he, he defends or, or vindicates his ministry. And the importance of that is that God used Paul to write much of the New Testament. And so it's really important that, that he be a valid minister and, and uh, an apostle of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he spends, it, it's a very personal book. You know, he really gets into his own personal life and his, his ministry and so on. Uh, he explains his ministry at the, the first few chapters and exhorts the church and vindicates his ministry. It deals with a lot of things and I think you'll find it really encouraging. Uh, I would encourage you to read through it at some, at some point at one sitting. You'll find it won't take you very long. A lot of times if you look at the books of the Bible, you'll find a lot of times there are only a few pages. You know, we think, we think they're so long, but like in my Bible, I think Corinthians is about five or six pages. <laughs> I mean, that's really not very much. And in a, in a few minutes, less than an hour, you could probably sit down and just read through it and get the, the flow of it. And I think that would be a blessing to you. Let's start in, in verse 1, 2 Corinthians 1. I'll just read the introduction. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timothy our brother, under the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. we we'll just stop reading there. You know, he, he talks there in verse 1 about how he's an apostle by the will of God. It's so important for us to know the will of God. The best place for you to be is in the will of God. And, uh, you know, many times we think, oh, how, how did I get here? Well, by God's will. You know, he's doing something in your life. And he talks about how it's, it's written unto the, the church of God, uh, and specifically the church of God, which is at Corinth. And uh, I don't believe you can be in God's will and not be a part of, of a church. You know, you need to be in the will of God. You need to be part of a, of a specific church. He talks about with all, all the saints. And his prayer for them then in, in verse 2 is, uh, is so encouraging. Aren't you glad there's people who care about you? And here was a man who cared about these people. If you've read 1 Corinthians, you know, they were, they were a troublesome lot. <laughs> and they had lots of problems. But he loved them. The grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, we need to care about each other. And then later on, verse 11, he says, Ye also helping together by prayer for us. And it goes both ways. He prayed for them. They, they prayed for him. Uh, that's the way it should be. And then in verse 3, his praise to God is the beginning, really, of the, of the content here. Uh, Blessed be God. That's a, that's a good thought, isn't it? That we can bless the Lord. You know, that we can, we can praise the Lord. And uh, that brings us to the first subject. He says, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of, of all comfort. Uh, God's comfort in tribulation is what he talks about here at the beginning of, of 2 Corinthians. Lately, I've had a, a, more than one person say to me, we are really hurting. And uh, you know, I realized everybody's hurting. <laughs> you know, not everybody talks about it. But we all have burdens that we're bearing, different difficulties. And there's things going on in our life you wouldn't have a clue about. And I'm sure it's the same for you. Uh, things that are going on that, you know, you, you don't wear it on your sleeve. But you take it to the Lord. And you go to the God of, of comfort. You know, we, we need to bless the Lord, especially when we're distressed. That's not the time to turn away from the Lord. That's not the time to curse the Lord. That's the time to bless the Lord. You know, when, you're, when you're troubled, listen, go to the Lord. He's the God of, of all comfort. Uh, in Psalm 34, he says, I will bless the Lord in good times. No, you listening? <laughs> I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know, no matter what's going on, that's Psalm 34.1. We need to bless the Lord. 
Psalm 50 he says, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. That's what we need to do with our lives. We need to glorify the Lord. When the early church was persecuted, and they were, one of the, one of the times what they said was, Oh Lord, thou art God. Boy, they'd been through some trouble. Lord, thou art God. You know, you hear the, the thunder tonight. Aren't you glad you've got a God that can shake the earth? <laughs> you know, uh, our Lord is God. And no matter what's going on, He's God. And we need to recognize that later on uh, in, in some of their, their persecution. Uh, it says, They departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for His name. Amen. We, we get associated with that great God. You know? And then the very next verse, they told him to quit preaching. Daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Man, they were going in for a second helping. <laughs> they wanted more distress. Now, that's not what they wanted. They just wanted to please the Lord. And you know, life is hard. Life is tough. But we're, we're not just here for life. We're here for eternity. We need to keep that in mind. Keep our eyes on, on, on the Lord. You see, the, the question that we're dealing with here tonight is, have you recognized God's right to rule? Have you recognized God's right to rule, to be God? Uh, the psalmist said, know ye that the Lord, He is God. And that's what Paul is dealing with as he talks about the God of all comfort, and he, he talks about his apostleship and their church and so on. The Lord is God, and we need to listen to Him. Uh, we need to see things from, from his point of view. Uh, remember verse 1 where he talked about uh, he's an apostle by the will of God. That's where we want to be. We want to be in the will of God. So tonight we're looking at uh, praising the Lord. Blessed be God. And one of the ways we do that is by recognizing that he is God. Uh, life, man, life just it keeps coming at you, doesn't it? But understand something. Uh, it's not just life we're living for. It's for the Lord. Uh, he is God. Secondly, it says there in verse 3, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll praise the Lord. We'll, we'll praise God by recognizing He's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, as, when you think about that, uh, it made me think of Romans 8, 31, when he said, If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. You see, that's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave Jesus for our, for our sins, for our, our help. He said, if He'll give Jesus, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? You know, what's God going to hold back if He's given us His best? Uh, we praise Him by recognizing that. He's given us His Son. Then He says in verse 3, He's the Father of mercies. We praise Him by recognizing that. There, there's a verse in Romans, it's Romans 12, 1, where He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You know, if you and I were writing that, if it wasn't the Holy Spirit writing it, we'd probably said, by the grace of God, all the good things God does for us, you know. But God says, I beseech you by the mercies of God. We could not exist without God's mercy. God withholding the judgment that we're due. Now, he's the Father of mercies. When it talks about the Father, it means He's the originator. It comes from Him. He's the Father of mercies. Uh, you know, Satan is called the Father of lies. <laughs> uh, Jubal in the Old Testament was the, the father of those that played with the harp. You know, he was the originator. Well, God is the Father of mercies. It comes from Him. And then the, the last statement there in verse 3, He's the God of all comfort. It's interesting, with comfort, you can see the triunity of God. Here it talks about God the Father is the, is the Comforter. Of course, in John 14, 15, 16, the Holy Spirit is the Comforter. Uh, in 1 John 2, 1, he uses another word, but it's the same, same word when he says that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. That word advocate is the, the, the Comforter, the one who comes alongside, the, par the paraclete. And uh, well, what a blessing it is. God in, in every level is our Comforter. He's on our side. Uh, we can praise the Lord as, as, we, as we think of that. Well, let's, let's continue on then. In verse, verse 4, He's the God of all comfort who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. 
For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. Uh, those are some great verses, aren't they? Uh, talking about what the Lord is, is doing, even in the distresses of our, of our lives. He's the God of all comfort. He comforts us, and he's, He expects us to pass that on. That's why it's good to remember what God has done. <laughs> Sometimes it's, I think it's good to write it down. I learned this lesson today. We, we forget. And then when somebody else is going through it, we can, we can jog our memory and, and we can be of help uh, to them. And the thing about our God is that this is not just a theoretical comfort. God comforts us. The Lord Jesus Christ has been through what, what we're going we're gonna to face. We have the comfort of one who understands. One of the reasons I say that, of course, is Hebrews chapter 4, where it talks about how our, our, we have a high priest, which, we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So he's been through it. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God understands when you're going through hard times. He understands your distress, and He consoles us. You know, we have consolation, He talks about. He helps us. Uh, he helps us see the purpose. He doesn't always show us what the purpose is, but He know, helps us to know that there is a purpose. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I guess sometimes in life we just, we go through it and we don't, you know, what was that all about? You know, we, we don't always know. But God always has a good purpose. Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to His purpose. If you're going to live your life to, for your own purpose, you're going to miss the comfort and blessing that God offers. Yeah, you, can, you can line out your life however you want, but listen, you, you need to listen to the Lord. <laughs> you need to see what God wants. Don't pray, Lord, here's what I want today. You need to pray, Lord, here's, what, what do you want from me today? Lord, here's my list of the day. It's blank. What do you want me to put on it? That's, that's the attitude we need to have. Uh, Christ is able to console us and show us His purpose. And God always has a purpose. With tribulation, I, I see at least two things that He's teaching us here. One is distress or trouble, tribulation, like He said, equips us to comfort others. There's no help like someone who's been through it and made it through. Like we read of Jesus, you know, he's, he's faced what we have, yet without sin. You know, if I'm going to ask for help, if I have a drinking problem, I'm not going to go to a drunk. I'm going to go to someone who's conquered it, you know, and, and deal with it that way. And Jesus never had a problem with sin. He faced it, yet he didn't give in to it. That's the one I want help from, the one who's been successful. And that's our, our Savior. In, uh, in verse 4, he says, He comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. That's good. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Now, now there's something you'll notice automatically that has to take place for, for this to work. You need to go to God for comfort. If you don't do that, all you'll do is irritate the person who's going through trouble. So, yeah, I've been through that too. Hope you make it. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that won't help them. But if you've gone to God for comfort, man, you'll be able to be a blessing. Uh, you, you know, trouble not only equips us, but it makes us like Christ. As we, as we go through these things and, and as we yield to the Lord, I, I don't know if I completely understand this, but in, in Hebrews chapter 5, it talks about how Jesus learned obedience and he was made perfect. You read those verses? It's Hebrews uh, 5, verses 8 and 9. And what it's talking about, the word perfect just means complete. You ever stop to think, God, God had never suffered before. God had never had to obey before. And these are things that He went through for us. He didn't need it for Himself. 
He did it for us so that he could be a sympathetic Savior, so that he could be the Savior. And what a blessing that, that God himself became a man, manifest in the flesh, so he could do those things uh, for us. And, you know, the little things we go through, you know, the things you go through seem bigger than they are sometimes, don't they? And then sometimes you'll see somebody else going through something and think, whoa, my little problem, nothing compared to theirs. Uh, and not always. There's always the person who's, who's got the worst, I guess. But, uh, you know, as you look at Jesus, it'll help you to realize uh, God is, has been there. Don't waste God's love, I guess is the point I, I would make here. When you're going through trouble, don't waste God's love. God has comfort available for you. Uh, the problem is many times we look for comfort in all the wrong places. You know, we go to the world. Some people go to the bottle, uh, to drugs, uh, to activities, to you know, all kinds of different things that people do. Go to the Lord. Find some pillows of help in God's Word, you know? Specific verses. I've known people who put their Bible under their pillow. Listen, that's not going to help you. <laughs> you sleep with their head on it and just give you a stiff neck. Open it up and apply it. Find specific verses that are meaningful to you. Let God comfort you through the, His Word. That's, that's what He's talking about. Uh, don't waste God's love. Be comforted of God, and then you'll be able to pass that on to others. Let me show you a word picture of this in Psalm 84. We'll get back to 2 Corinthians there, but Psalm 84 is a, a, this same truth. In a, I, would, maybe a, I don't know if I'm right in saying this, but I would call it a word picture. Psalm 84, verse uh, 5, I'll start with. It says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well. Now, the valley of Baca, if you look that up, it's the valley of suffering. It's, it's kind of like Psalm 23, the valley of the shadow of death. It's somebody going through trouble. The valley of Baca, make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength. And what he's saying is, when you're in the valley of trouble, make a well. Make a place of refreshment. Make a place of, of sustenance and, and, and of and of refreshing. And it'll not only help you, you'll get through the valley, somebody else is coming along behind you. And they'll find that well. Now that, that's just a picture, isn't it? That's kind of a word picture. But in reality, it's, it's what we do when we go to the Lord for comfort and then we're able to help others because of how the Lord helped us, us through. This is a, a second-hand illustration, but uh, Pastor Truitt of, of First Baptist of Dallas said that he did a funeral for a couple whose baby had died. Well, that'd be a hard time, wouldn't it? And he said in the process, he led them to Christ. Well, later, a, a, another young mother in their church lost a baby. And he just felt unable. Whatever he said to her just didn't seem to make a difference. But at the funeral, that first mother, the, the, young, the new Christian, said to her, Listen, I've, I've been where you are. I passed through that, that valley. In the darkness, God called me. And I came to him, and he's comforted me, and he can comfort you. You know, there's, there's no help like a person who's been helped. Someone who's gone to the Lord and been refreshed and been helped. And what a blessing. You know, there's some ministries you don't want. But sometimes God gives us a ministry of comfort. And we need to take it with, with both hands. Uh, tribulation equips us to comfort others. The Bible says in verse 5, here's a, here's a precious verse. As the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Our consolation abounds by Christ. See, God is always at work. He's at work in our afflictions. Our afflictions will affect others, our troubles. Uh, he's at work in our comfort. Our comfort will affect others. In verse 7, he says, And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also of the consolation. Our hope will affect others. Hope is a big part of our life. And, and listen, don't accept affliction without consolation. One follows the other for Christians. Don't just accept the affliction, and you'll have it, 
Understand from God, with affliction comes consolation. As you go through the affliction, just look for it. God has it there. And we need to understand that. Uh, that's our Savior. That's just who He is. That's the way He is. That's our hope. In teaching us about counseling, when I, I was studying on that, they said one of the main things, one of the first things, is to show them there's hope. And it, in Christ there is. He, he's not only the God of comfort, He's also the God of hope. What a blessing. Now the God of hope fill you with all, you know, blessing and consolation. You know, we're not like the world. We're not like the world. We don't just have to go through trouble. We go through trouble, but we have hope. We have consolation. That leads us to the next point. Uh, tribulation not only equips us to com comfort others, makes us like Christ. Tribulation will also keep you from having a false faith. Look at verse 9. He says, But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. See, it's important that you understand where your hope is, what your faith is. And God will help you. You say, this is the kind of help I don't need, but uh, God will help you to see where your faith is by the trouble you go through. You walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you'll find out who you're trusting. Tribulation will keep us from having a false faith. Let me read verses 8 through 10. Very personal. We would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. And what a blessing it is to see. Uh, God allows trials, but He also enables us in them. And He says He'll deliver us from them. Now, sometimes the way God delivers us from trouble is He takes us home. <laughs> you remember the three Hebrew children in the book of Daniel? They'd been told they had to bow down to the idol. They said, we're not bound down. If you don't bow down, we're going to throw you in the fiery furnace. Hey, throw us in the fiery furnace. <laughs> you know, uh, they, they said, we don't even have to think about that. Uh, we're going to worship our God. And they knew that God could deliver them from the fiery furnace or God could take them home. Either way, they're happy. They're with the Lord. Now we need to understand, God has help for us in our tribulation. We know, if you're saved, you know that God has delivered you spiritually. I hope you know that. Past, present, and future, like he talks about there in verse 10. Uh, with your past, God has set you free from sin's judgment. You know, whatever your past is, it's under the blood. Uh, you're saved by grace. In, in the present, God tells us that we're free from the power of sin. Did you know that? We need to understand that. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, just one page back in my Bible. Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory in Jesus. The page the other way, uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Now thanks be unto God which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make us manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. We have victory in Jesus. We need to understand that. And our future is even better. <laughs> you know, as great as it is to walk with the Lord now, uh, our future is even better. Let, let God worry about tomorrow. Uh, I was reading something that said, uh, what you plant today, you'll harvest tomorrow. We need to remember that. But what that means is we need to live for God today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just live for God today. Let him take care of tomorrow. Live by faith today, real faith. Uh, tribulation will keep us from having a false faith. Number one, we need to trust God. Secondly, on this subject, verse 11, we need to ask for help. Look at verse 11. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Now, all those words, what, he, what he's saying is, if you'll pray for me, when God answers, we'll all be able to praise the Lord. <laughs> many will pray, many will praise. And uh, that needs to be true of our lives. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a gift that God has given us. It's called your local church. <laughs> it's one of the greatest tools that we don't use uh, of any that God has given to us. You know, we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Scripture. We have, we have lots of tools that God's given us. One is your local church. For you, it's this church. And uh, people will pray. That's why we meet for prayer meeting. That's why we share things and, and so on. 
Many people will pray. Many people will, will praise. Ask for help. Ask people to pray. Sometimes you'll have to humble yourself to do that. Listen, I'm struggling with this. Will you pray for me? You don't always have to make a public announcement, but get individuals praying for you. Ask for help. Trust God. Ask for help. Thirdly, verse 12, view your life as a gift. Let me read the verse. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we've had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you word. In the middle of the verse there, he talks about the grace of God. And he, he relates it to our conversation in the world. The word conversation means your manner of life. You need to view your life as a gift from God. Live by the grace of God. Uh, we can't earn or deserve good. You know, we might have certain things in mind. Oh, if, if this would happen or that would happen, well, that would be good. Well, listen, we, we, we can't demand that. Our life is just by the grace of God. Who we are, where we live, our situations. Uh, many times we're facing what we're facing because we've not lived by the grace of God. We've lived in disobedience to God. We're going to reap what we sow. We can't earn or deserve good. We actually deserve bad. <laughs> but God gives us, gives us good. And we need to quit demanding from the Lord and just take what He gives us and thank Him for it and, and use it to be a blessing. I, I remember meeting a lady. I probably talked to her for two minutes. And uh, she related to me that she was pretty mad at God because her son had died. Her son had been 33. And that would be terrible. I said, do you realize that's how old Jesus was when he died? And he died for you? I said, did you ever... Sometimes I say things, and I wish I hadn't said them sometimes, but I said, did you ever thank God that he gave you 33 years with your son? Now, you know, that's easy for me to say, hard for her to deal with, but uh, you know, we have no guarantee. When God gives us children, we don't know how long we'll have them. God gives us parents, we don't know how long we'll have our parents. Some parents live to be 90. I was uh, listening to a fellow. His dad died when his dad was 59. You know, we just don't know. Life is a gift from God. And if we'll view it like that, we'll be grateful. And it'll help us. Um, we need to, he says here in verse 12, we need to live simply with simplicity. We need to live sincerely. We need to live, not, he says, not by, with fleshly wisdom. We need to live God's way. I've often heard it said, we need to live by faith, not by figuring. You know? We try to figure out what we should do and then try and fit God into it. We need to live by faith. I have a note that I wrote to myself on my desk. I've had it there for a few weeks. Live by faith, not by fear. Maybe, maybe you need to write yourself the same note. Live by faith, not by fear. He talks here in verse 12 about the conscience, and we're going to look next week at, at some of that. But you know, I would encourage you tonight to stop and ask yourself, have you recognized God's right to rule? Uh, each of us has a, a path. You know, each of us has a life that we're living. There are some things about your life you just cannot change. You need to thank God for it. You need to just see what, what God would do. Live by faith. Live just trusting the Lord. We're all going to have tribulations and afflictions and, and trouble. And if we'll seek God's comfort in those troubles we'll be able to pass it on to others. Let, let those troubles show you your heart. We don't always like that, but, you know, when trouble comes, it shows us what our faith really is. And if we're not living by faith, let God heal you and help you. Turn to God and, and trust Him. This is a convicting portion of Scripture when He talks about the comfort that He has. When we go through trouble... If we'll seek the comfort of the Lord, we can pass it on to others. And it'll show us uh, where our faith really is. This evening, I, I thought we'd conclude by just singing, without the piano, we'll just uh, sing the, the words to Search Me, O God, and Know My Heart. It's page 534 in your songbook if you needed it there. It's from Psalm 139, page 534. 